Adventures. Just like a lot of my videos, this one starts out with the I'm starting a new project. But wait, you might say, he hasn't finished his last project. You're right, you, can, you might be able to see a little bit of it right there. It's still on that loom. But this weekend I'm going to be doing a little bit of weaving demonstrating up in Green Bay and this big old floor loom of mine is transportable if I rent a truck, but I don't have a truck. So I'm, I need to warp up my Ashford H-shaft table loom so that I've got something which I can take along and do the weaving on. So that's reason number one for a new project. That's the big reason for the new project. The other thing I want to do is I recently saw a video by someone whose YouTube channel is called Vermont Weaving Supplies. And the way she prepared her warp and put it onto her loom for front to back threading of the loom is different than the way I have always done front to back threading. I found it intriguing and I'm curious to see whether or not I can do it that way and have it be any improvement at all from the way I have done things for years and years and years. So, I mean, I've had that Ashford loom um, at least 20 years. If I think about it, yeah, I think it's about a little over 20 years. Anyways, um, this, I mean, a lot of the process has got to be the same, right? But she used lee sticks that she had tied to the front breast beam when she was threading the, uh, the reed. And I've never done, used lee sticks for threading the reed from the front. So I'm just plain curious to see how that would work. I'm going to try it and see what happens. So that's what we'll be doing in this project. It's pure experimentation to see if this method of front to back threading the reed and therefore the whole loom will work for me or not. Here I am measuring the warp at my warping board. I don't have a warping mill to do the entire warp in one great big chain. I tried that method a number of years ago when I took the class at Vavstuga, but I don't feel comfortable with that method. So I'll stick to measuring smaller chains on my warping board that I built at home. You can see that this part of the video has been sped up to about four times the actual speed. You can also see that I'm tying choke ties in multiple places on this and on all the warps that I do. I think I use more choke ties than most weavers in the area of the cross, but I just feel better with more choke ties to be extra careful that I don't lose the cross. By the way, I have not been happy in the past with the sound quality of my voice when overdubbing parts of the video like this. So I just bought a new microphone and this is the first video in which I'm using it. Well, YouTubers, I realize the angle on this is a little funny because your camera's going at this angle. But it's the way I can manage to sit here at the front of this thing and work on it all at the same time. So, right here I have used a little bit of masking tape to hold the lee sticks on. Here's one of them. Here's the other one. The cross is in between them. Um, I'm using a little piece of wood stuck under so I've got some height off there so I can pull forward as need be. And as you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bouts on of 20 threads each and one, two, three, four to go. So let's show you the process that I am using. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
untie the um, choke string that I used at the cross. And I'm going to retie that down just a little farther just to keep things in place. Now I can pull forward on the cross a little bit. So let's do that. So there's the cross. Okay. So I've pulled that forward. I also, just out of habit, always tie one more choke tie at the very tip of what I'm doing. So there's that. I don't need it anymore. And now let's find the first pair of strings because I I did not untie these as a bunch at the beginning. I just don't want to take a chance of having them get tangled. So it's probably slower to snip each one individually but I feel it's safer process. And there we go. I'm also, if you remember a few videos back, I switched the method by which I thread or slay the reed on my other loom. Well, I'm trying that on this loom for the first time, and we'll see how it works. It seems to be working pretty decently so far, um, but yes, I'm doing two changes at once, so that's, you should never do that, that way you can't tell if your improvement is from change number one or change number two, but I think I'm seeing the slaying part a little easier with it done this way. I don't know how this sound is coming through because I'm not facing the camera. Um, I have decided to order a new microphone which I'm going to probably just use at the computer because it's a USB microphone and use that for overdubbing um, sound during the editing process. Hopefully that will, if you've noticed on some of my older videos, whenever I mute and say do a, a computer screen, the sound quality always goes way down because I'd been using the, um, the microphone from my little teeny cheap webcam. And it did not give a very good sound quality. So I've spent some money to buy um, a microphone called an Elgato Wave 3. It's one of a few that has pretty good reviews both on YouTube and Amazon. So hopefully it turns out pretty decent. This is a slow process, isn't it? Yeah, well. I'm not a production weaver, so... For, when I started over on this end, with the first couple of bouts, I felt like this was not 
a sensible way to do it. It just didn't feel right. As I'm going farther along, and yeah, I'm not quite done yet, but I'm beginning to see that this may be a reasonable way to um, to do things, leaving or using leaf sticks on this loom when threading front to back, which I'm doing obviously because I'm going through the reed before I'm going through the heddles. Okay, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm just going to put a slip knot holding them into batches of ten until I can get around and pull everything through and start uh, threading the heddles. There we go, that's one more bout of 20 threads. Well, you can see I've finished slaying the reed. Well, you can't probably see what's back here. Um, I did discover one mistake right about this area. Um, so 20, 40, 60, or 80 threads in. A little over. I uh, found that I missed one dent, so I've got an open dent in there. But this is a soft enough wool that I think once it's off the machine and mushled around a little bit, that won't be too much of a problem in the end product. So um, I'm planning on doing this as plain weave. So to make it easier for flipping levers, instead of having to flip one and three and then two and four. I want to flip one and two together and then three and four together. So I'm threading it one, three, two, four. That'll make it come out a little easier. So put those down. And now it's just a case of doing the heddles. I know I'm not fast at this, never have been, probably never will be. I've seen other people go much faster. I remember when I took the course at Vavstuga that Becky was a lot faster at this. I've also noticed that uh, when I look at Jane Stafford's videos, she goes a hell of a lot faster than I do at threading the heddles. Um, I make enough mistakes without uh, adding a threading error because I'm going too fast. So let's grab another one, three, then two, and four. I don't know if you can tell, but I removed some heddles from here. There's a bunch of heddles that I took off. I tied them into bundles so I can keep them straight. And I put little um,
tags on them to show me how many heddles are in each bundle. Because I just, I had, this is a thicker thread. I'm only going 10 ends per inch. And it'll all cover the whole thing. And the goal here is um, 220 threads, so 22 inches. Now, yeah, there'll be a little bit of drawing and everything, but 22 inches in the reed. And there would have been just way too many bundles of heddles sitting at the side. So I just took some off. It's easier on this loom to do that than it is over on the Louette spring. That puppy, it's just difficult to add and remove heddles. And I've got more space there, so. One, three, two, four. We'll comb this out just to get everything out and out straight. Pull them out and tie a knot in the end. There we go. There's 10 of them done. I'm not going to keep you watching this part. It's I've been going for, what, an hour and a half, maybe? What time is it? It's 10.43, and I think I started about 9.30, 9.40, so I'm all... In fact, I am. I'm exactly halfway through. So another hour or so hour and a half. Maybe I'll get this part done. I think this video is already long enough. I'm going to stop editing at this point and get this uploaded so that you can see what I've done in the way of setup on this project. Um, I'll keep editing the video and put up a second part to this showing the weaving and the finished product in just a couple days. As usual with all producers on YouTube, Rumble, or wherever online, I want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time to watch my video. And if you like uh, this type of content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment, whatever works for you. And I'll put the second part of this video up in just a couple days. Until then, bye-bye.